Commissioner, as regards the uh, Ambassador Bridge blockade, I understand that the uh, Windsor Police Service were the police of jurisdiction, but the OPP uh, took the lead in coordinating enforcement. Correct, in, uh, in cooperation with Windsor Police, yes. Right, and you told us that part of the reason for that was public trust, but wasn't another reason that the Windsor Police Service were not experienced with large protests? I can't speak to the extent of Windsor Police Service's experience, um, but they certainly would not have the experience of a, of a large city like Toronto or Ottawa. And this protest at the Ambassador Bridge, it was obviously, a, it was a large protest. It was what, sorry? It was a large protest. Uh, I can't s specifically state the numbers, but I would uh, define it as a, uh, a larger uh, protest in terms of impact. There were a number of uh, motor vehicles, there were a number of people, and it took over 400 uh, police resources to deal with that protest. I just want to ask you some questions about how the, the OPP and their partners managed to clear that process, uh, that protest. And so I understand uh, from your evidence earlier today that the injunction, uh, while it was helpful, it wasn't effective in isolation. Correct. What was really effective uh, was the operational plan of February the 12th. Is that right? Yes, it was the operational plan of February 12th that enabled the, the police actions to uh, successfully disperse the blockade, yes. And they were able, able to successfully disperse the blockade at the bridge on February the 12th. Does that sound right to you? Between February the 12th and into uh, to February the 13th. It was a two-day you... two operation. Sorry, if you see uh, this uh, document, it's an email from uh, Commissioner Lucky to you, uh, sorry, from, from mm -hmm. you to Lucky, yes. and you say here on uh, February the 12th um, that uh, the OPP, the RCMP, uh, the London Police and POUs cleared the blockade at the Ambassador Bridge. So I'm just talking about at the Ambassador Bridge, not in the city. Yeah, so there was a large uh, piece of geography that the officers had to contend with. So the specific blockage at the, the bridge uh, was cleared on that date, and they still had more protesters that had to be cleared out of the general area to ensure that that was secured. And that, that happened on the 13th? The, the second por portion of the operational plan happened on the 13th, yes. Yes, thank you. And then in the early morning of the 14th, uh, the Ambassador Bridge opened to traffic. Is that right? That is correct, yes. Okay, and obviously that was before the uh, invocation of the Emergencies Act. Yes, it was. The next day on February the 15th, the bridge was fully operational. I believe so. I believe so, but that's uh, that's best to come from the local police service of jurisdiction or Superintendent Dana Early, but that's my understanding, yes. Thank you. We'll confirm that with uh, Dana Early. Earlier today, my uh, friend from the City of Windsor brought you to uh, a document. It was a traffic plan, and it was OPP uh, 6011. Did you have a chance to review that plan before coming here today? No, I did not. The first I have seen the, the plan is when it was presented to me here today. So I'm going to suggest to you that if you did look at that plan, you would see that uh, the powers which are listed in that plan to control traffic uh, deal with um, federal legislation such as the criminal code and provincial legislation, but they don't make any reference to the Emergencies Act. And it's for the obvious point that the plan was uh, created on February the 13th, uh, 2022. That would be correct. There would be no ability to reference uh, legislation that did not, did not exist. I understand that there were police officers for uh, in Windsor for quite a while after the bridge was cleared, uh, but they wouldn't be required to be there to control traffic. Their specific duties, I would suggest, should uh, be provided by Superintendent Early or specifically the Windsor Police. I'm not familiar with what they had them doing day to day. I'm sorry. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Earlier today, you told us um, a little bit about the economic impacts of the blockade at the Ambassador Bridge. And I think you said it was $700 million per day. That was my understanding, yes, of two-way trade. That's not your specialty. That's just something that you were told. 
That's just something that I'm uh, aware of. Yes, certainly not my specialty, not anything that I have verified or confirmed, uh, but certainly my understanding. Understood. You cannot tell us then whether um, uh, that financial impact was mitigated uh, by traffic being diverted to the uh, to the Detroit Windsor Tunnel or to the Blue Water Bridge. That's not something that I could uh, comment on. No, sorry. Earlier today, when you were telling us about the Blue Water Bridge, um, you said that the, the blockade wasn't actually at the Blue Water Bridge, but it was some uh, 30 to 40 kilometers away. That is correct. Yes. Do I understand correctly um, that the OPP were able to clear that blockade by February the 14th? Uh, I don't recall the exact date, but we were able to clear it in and around that date. Yes, in very close proximity to, uh, to clearing the Ambassador Bridge. Okay. And in any event, when you, uh, when you cleared that uh, blockade, what was very useful was uh, the PLT teams and the risks caused to the protesters by the uh, EMPCA. EMCPA, yes, e correct. EMC, thank you. One last question, just about Cornwall, because that came up in your evidence today too, and you said that there was a point of entry in Cornwall, uh, which was blocked on February the 12th, um, and that there were significant concerns there. Uh, among other things, you said it was jurisdictionally complex. Uh, you said there were concerns of violence. I was wondering, can you tell us, was there a lot of farm equipment at that protest? I believe there was farm equipment at that, that protest, yes. And when, when you talked about the Blue Water uh, Bridge protest, I know it wasn't at the Blue Water Bridge, but I'm referring it to that it, in that way, the 402 protest. Um, the, the, emerge, the, the provincial emergency powers were effective because that was farm equipment. Uh, was it also effective at Cornwall? I can't say that it was effective because it was farm equipment, um, but it was an effective tool that we relied upon. Um, I can't say in the case of Cornwall uh, what effectively, effectively enabled them to de-escalate that situation. That was a momentary uh, blockade, a momentary demonstration that did not last for any prolonged period of time. In fact, I think it cleared by the same day, by February the 12th. It did, correct. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Those are my questions. Thank you. With your support, our lawyers will be in Ottawa for the next few weeks, trying to hold our government accountable for its improper declaration of an emergency. To follow our work in the inquiry, visit the democracyfund.ca slash commission, and please consider making a tax-deductible donation to help contribute to our fight. We thank you so much for your support.